All right, here we go with section 6.7, arc length. So our learning target is to be able to explain the relationship among arc length, radius, and angle measure in degrees. And if you remember earlier back in section or chapter 6, we learned that the measure of a minor arc is equal to the measure of its central angle. So if I have a circle here, there's my center. I'm going to put a couple points here, point A and point B over there. I'm going to draw in a central angle. We'll call that C. So I know that the measure of angle A, C, B, my central angle, is going to be equal to the measure of arc A, B. Remember it has its vertex at the center, so this angle and this arc will have the same measure. So if this was 58 degrees, this would also be 58 degrees. So if we turn our attention now to a clock, the measure of the arc from 12 to 4 is going to be equal to the measure of the angle formed by the hour and the minute hands. So if I have my clock over here, we're looking at a hand at 12 and a hand at 4. There's 12, there's 4. So this angle here and this arc from here to here, those are going to be the same. So what we want to do next in part A over here is to find the measure of each hour given that the circular clock is divided into 12 equal arcs. One arc here, one arc here, one arc here. All the way around we've got 12 equal arcs. We know that all 12 of those arcs have to add up to 360 degrees. So if I want to find out how much one of those 12 is, divide by 12, so we get 30 degrees. So from here to here is going to be 30 degrees, and we're going to have 30 degrees between each two numbers on the clock. So now if I want to find the measure of the arc from 12 to 4, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 of these arcs. So I have 4 of those arcs. We just figured out that each one of those arcs is going to be 30 degrees. So the measure of the arc from 12 to 4 would be 120 degrees. All right, so moving on to something a little bit different. Notice that because the minute hand is longer, the tip of the minute hand must travel farther than the tip of the hour hand, even if they both move 120 degrees from the 12 to the 4. So the arc length is different even though the arc measure is the same. So let's take a look at this. Here I've got my minute hand. And let me see if I can grab a different color here. Let's try that one. Here I've got my hour hand. So we're both starting at the 12. So if I move the minute hand from 12 to 4, so here's 3 o'clock, here's 4 o'clock, it's going to go to here and it's going to travel, let's do a, a little yellow highlighter here, this is the arc that it would travel from there to there. Okay, now if I move the hour hand, it's going to go over to here also. Okay, you see how the hour hand is shorter, so its arc is going to be like this. So this is actually part of a smaller circle than the one that the minute hand would be on. So the minute hand is going to be on this big circle. The hour hand would be going along this smaller circle. Just pretend that's a circle. Okay, so what we're talking about is the distance from here to here. I'm walking along my black circle all the way from there to there is going to be less than the distance from here to here if I was going to walk along the red circle from there to there, even though I've gone 120 degrees in both circles. All right, let's move on to page two. Take a look at some examples. 
So example C, arc AB is what fraction of circle T? So we see we have a little 90 degree angle here. So A, B, arc AB would be 90 degrees out of 360 degrees or one fourth of circle T. So over here we're looking at arc CED from here to here all the way halfway around. So arc CED we can see that that's 180 degrees out of 360 degrees. So that would be one half of the circle. All right, moving on to EF. We see it starts here, goes around this way, over to F. We can see that arc is 120 degrees. So EF is going to be 120 degrees out of 360 degrees or one-third of the circle. So the measure of an arc is calculated in units of degrees, but the arc length is calculated in units of distance. So again, over here, if I'm talking about the measure from here to here, I've got 90 degrees, but if I'm talking about the length, I've traveled a quarter of the way around the circle. So how do I figure out how far that actually is? Well, if I want to figure out how far that is, I'm going to need to know what my radius is. So we'll talk about that next. So my arc length is going to be equal to a fraction of the circle. Okay, so we're going to have the measure of the arc divided by 360 times 2 times pi times r the perimeter of our circle, otherwise known as circumference. Okay, so that's how we're going to calculate the arc length. We need to know what fraction of the circle, just like we figured out in example C, D, and E. Then if we know the radius, we can find out how long the whole circumference is, multiply by what fraction of the circle is, and we have the arc length. So moving on to a couple examples, if I want to find the arc length over here, we can see that this arc is 300 degrees, so it's 300 degrees out of 360 degrees, and the circumference is going to be 2 times pi times the radius, which is 6 feet. So 300 divided by 360, that's going to be 30 out of 36 and then if I divide each of these by 3 that's going to be 10 and 12 and then if I divide by 2 it's going to be 5 and 6 so we have 5 6 of the circle so let's see on the numerator here I've got I'm going to put these all over 1 so I have fractions so I have 5 times 2 is 10 times 6 is 60. So I have 60 times pi. In the denominator, I had 6. So we have 10 pi feet. Okay, and we're going to leave our answers in terms of pi. We could plug that into our calculator and figure out it's going to be about 31.4 feet. But we'll just leave it as 10 pi. So let's go ahead and let's do example uh, B for this. Again, our arc is 240 degrees. So we're going to have 240 divided by 360 times 2 times pi times our radius, which is 5. So I'm going to calculate all these on my little calculator over here now. So I've got 2, 
40 times 2 times 5 divided by 360 and that gives me 6.67 so we have 6.67 pi feet all right, moving on to the next one. Here we have 60 degrees of the circle. So we've got 60 360s times 2 times pi times our radius, which is 11. So let's calculate this one all the way out. So we're going to have, let's clear that. We have 60 times 2. Let's use uh, 3.14. We'll get a decimal answer for this one for pi times 11 divided by 360. And we get 11.51 inches. Make sure you follow the directions carefully so that you know whether to leave your answer in terms of pi like we did for A and B or if you want to leave it as a decimal like we did in C and we'll also do in part D. Alright, so part D. If the radius of a circle is 7 inches, what is the arc length? So we're looking for this arc length over here. Okay, so we're running out of time with my uh, video here. So go ahead and work on part D. And you've got a couple other problems to do on the next page. And come with your questions to class tomorrow.